Today we get to dive into baptism a little bit, no pun intended there. And so we'll start out with asking the question, what is baptism? Luther explains it for us in this way. He says, baptism is not simply water, but it is a water used according to God's command and connected with God's word. In other words, every time you take a shower, every time you go for a swim, that's not a baptism. But baptism happens when there is water connected with God's command and God's word. The type of water, the amount of water, where the water comes from, that's all irrelevant. What matters is that there is water and God's word and God's command. And so what is this word of God that commands this? It is the word of our Lord Jesus Christ as recorded in the last chapter of Matthew. Go therefore make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. And that's again Matthew chapter 28 verse 19. You can find that there. But as we look here, there is the command that Jesus gives to his disciples to baptize or make disciples of all nations. And how do you do that? By baptizing them. And the next verse will say, and by teaching them to observe everything that I have commanded you. I want to say something here as it says, make disciples of all nations. This isn't talking about political entities here or all uh, social political countries, different things like that. But nations, a word that's used there is all people groups, all races, all people, all tribes, every tongue, um, whoever, wherever you might find human beings, God commands us to make disciples of them, to teach them everything that God has commanded, but also to baptize them. As Peter is sharing a sermon in Acts chapter 2, he's sharing a sermon to an audience proclaiming God's word, and the audience there is pierced to their heart. And they say, brethren, what must we do? And Peter responds, and he says this in Acts chapter 2, verse 38. He says to them, Repent, and each of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off, as many as the Lord our God will call to himself. I want to make a couple notes based here on this passage and also talking uh, from the Matthew 28 passage. When it says nations... Who are na- what are nations made up of? They're made up of people. Every single person. We had a census in 2020. I don't know what the results for that are. But every person who is in a household or every person should have been marked down or accounted for. It wasn't ages 16 plus. It wasn't just men. It wasn't just the employed. It was every person in this country at this time of the census got counted. Same thing. Uh, God calls us to make disciples of all nations and all people in there. As Peter says in Acts chapter 2, who is this promise for? This promise is for you uh, first and foremost to the people who ask the question, but he also says, and it's also for your children. And then he goes a step further and says, and for all who are far off. And this promise does a couple of different things here. Jesus or Peter says that it, you will have the forgiveness of sins. You'll receive the forgiveness of sins and the Holy Spirit. So he says, repent and be baptized. And it's interesting the word that he used there for be baptized. It's a command but it's also a passive command. It's not something that we do. It's something that is done to us. It's something that we receive. And so Peter says, this is, if you want to know what to do, how to get rid of your sins, how to deal with your sins, here's the, situ- here's the solution. Repent and be baptized. And I'll pause one more sidetrack to uh, some people like to point out, it says, yes, be baptized, but it says repent, repent first, repent and then be baptized. But if you look at the text, it doesn't say repent and then be baptized. It simply says repent and be baptized. So is this talking about two different sequential events or is it just talking about one event? Uh, We have a similar thing in English. If I were to tell you that this morning for breakfast I had bacon and eggs, does that mean that I ate all my bacon first and then I had my eggs? Or does that just mean for the event of breakfast, this is what I had? It means for the event of breakfast, this is what I had. Same thing for what must we do. Here's the situation. Here's what needs to be done. Repent of your sins and be baptized. It's the same thing happening at the same time. And in doing these things, God is at work in us, delivering to us the forgiveness of sins and also giving to us the Holy Spirit. And again, this promise is for you. 
and for your children and for all who are far off. We'll come back again next week and we'll look more at baptism and what it has for us. God bless you and have a great day.